website. Uh, welcome everyone to LMDA's conference 2021. My name is Brenda Muñoz and I am the conference coordinator. Thank you all for your patience. Uh, this panel, Mexico City 2006, Mexico City 2021 and beyond, will be presented in English. But remember that we have oral simultaneous interpretation available through Web Switcher Pro. That's an app that you can all download on your phones or gadgets. And you can take a look at the token in our virtual hub on their oral simultaneous interpretation. Hola a todos, mi nombre es Brenda Muñoz, soy coordinadora del Congreso LMDA 2021. Me da mucho gusto darles la bienvenida a este panel. Ciudad de México 2006, Ciudad de México 2021 y más allá. Este panel será presentado en inglés, pero recuerden que tenemos acceso a interpretación oral simultánea a través de Web Switcher Pro, una app que pueden descargar en sus teléfonos o en sus gadgets. Y pueden encontrar el token acceso en nuestro Virtual Hub debajo de interpretación oral simultánea. Now I will leave this panel to the all stars of LMDA. So you guys, thank you very much for being here. And the panel is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Brenda. Thank you, Brenda. Thank you, Brenda. Um, Brenda, uh, my partner in this, Liz Engelman and I, uh, would like to, uh, we're grateful to you uh, and your colleagues, um, as well as Martine, Ryan Moore, LMDA, uh, uh, obviously Howl Round involved, uh, for allowing this to happen today. In many ways, I think what we want to do is to uh, invite everyone to what really is a kind of reunion uh, after 15, 16 years uh, that Liz Engelman and I started. Uh, we had a, um, uh, a sort of odd quixotic notion about 15, 16 years ago, and Liz will share more of those thoughts and, and a number of people will share memories of that event uh, a little later on. Uh, but I think it started with a notion that was primarily about curiosity uh, on our part. Um, we, uh, our organization, Literary Managers and Dramaturgs of the Americas, which was founded in the mid 1980s, uh, uh, was originally Literary Managers and Dramaturgs of the America, and then became Literary Managers and Dramaturgs of the Americas. And at a certain point, I think we began to feel a little uh, shabby about that. We felt that we needed to uh, extend the notion of what that might be. And part of that was our, our not a colonialist gesture, surely, not at all, but it was about a kind of curiosity on our part and uh, the need to find out about what was taking place uh, in terms of how theater was being made uh, beyond our southern borders. And so that discussions that we began to have, and largely uh, Liz and I were having them, and many of our Canadian uh, colleagues gave me the courage to write a letter to uh, a friend of mine, <laughs> a gifted playwright, director, producer, uh, Sabina Berman. And in that letter, I uh, asked her about what was taking place in terms of playwriting, dramaturgy, and uh, what were the issues that were facing uh, artists uh, in the 21st century uh, in uh, Mexico and Central and South America. And in that letter, I literally had the courage or audacity uh, to ask her the following. This may sound like a dream, Sabina, but I believe we need to break down, begin to break down between our communities, the not so invisible artistic borders that exist now. That began some things. Uh, we had a series of letters, a series of exchanges, and I shared them uh, also with my colleague, Liz Engelman. I, at the time, was the board president of LNDA. Liz was the incoming president of LNDA. And, uh, Liz had many initiatives in mind for the future of LMDA. And 
<laughs> we, in June of 2004, decided to fly down to Mexico, Mexico City, and to meet with Sabina, which we did. Uh, at the same time, we saw Sabina's extraordinary uh, production of extras, uh, stones uh, based on uh, Marie Jones's Stones in Pockets, uh, and met then also with uh, a number of people, including the late uh, Victor Hugo Rascon Banda. And uh, I'm sure uh, Liz will talk later about that event, which was an amazing event that, that to this day still has an impact on me. Uh, we also at that time Sylvia Pelez, who you will uh, hear from a little later. Uh, we began to have plans at that time about a LMDA conference. Um, we had lofty plans. <laughs> and uh, I always think about uh, in the first season of the HBO series Deadwood, uh, based on that wild, wild west uh, town in South Dakota, that uh, one of the founding fathers of that uh, Brechtian Mahogony of the High Plains, what he once said is, if you want to hear God laugh, tell him your plans. Well, our lofty plans, our initial lofty plans began to fall apart. And we ended up in this winter spring of 2006 uh, planning a, a much more modified conference. But thanks to uh, the Mexico City planners, we ended up being invited. And it was a gift, a tremendous gift at that time, uh, uh, especially under Mario Espinosa's direction, being invited to the Puerto de las Americas Festival. Uh, I'm going to hold this up. Uh, I, have, I have my own props. I always have props if you're going to have a keynote address. <laughs> and it was an extraordinary event. Uh, uh, we were invited, uh, 10 LMDA delegates from Canada and the United States. Uh, we, we were hosted uh, over a three day period. I won't talk about it too much because my colleagues will talk about that specifically. But we flew down to Mexico City in 2006. Uh, and uh, it was an extraordinary event. And again, we were treated so graciously. And uh, I say that we began to plant some seeds. Uh, we were helped. We were guided. Uh, so many wonderful panels took place. Um, I will tell one memory uh, of, of so many other wonderful memories. I, uh, this Yankee dramaturg who <laughs> really was there on a mission of great curiosity, um, tried to lead a panel uh, with 20 playwrights. Uh, and I, I went around the room uh, in a circular way, asking, you know, what their plays were about. And I had great curiosity. It was not a faux curiosity. Uh, but after about five of them uh, politely, uh, you know, shared some things, I realized, having taught for many, many years at different places, realized they were merely being polite to this Yankee dramaturg. And, and I stopped and I said, I think this is enough. You're being very polite to me. Uh, I want to ask something else. Because I knew it was on the eve of a major presidential election that was about to happen. And, and I asked the question, you as an artist, as a citizen of Mexico right now, in Mexico, what is it that you fear the most? Let's go around the room. And at that moment, that triggered a forest of hands. And everyone from their heart, their artistic heart, started to talk about what they feared as artists. And it was an amazing moment for me. Uh, and, and, and that was an incredible moment. And at the end of that three days, I confessed my shame as a United States citizen and perhaps as an artist too, at the prospect of a wall that was beginning to go up. And now 15 years later, we know uh, in a more concrete way, unfortunately, at the prospect of a wall. And I reminded them that they cannot build a wall around our curiosity. They cannot prevent our imaginations from touching. And I'd like to believe that LMDA and this LMDA conference today, June, uh, reflects those of the, and the Mexico conference that's happening in June 28, 29, that those imaginations continue to touch 15 years later. Uh, I'd now like to turn it over to uh, my other colleagues to begin to introduce themselves one by one, and then also 
convey their memories of that time. Uh, perhaps we could start, I know Conchi is going off to a rehearsal. Conchi, could we start with you? Conchi Leon. Hola, Conchi. <laughs> hola, hola. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not, yes, I think my please, English Conchi. is not good enough. I think my English is not good enough, so I don't understand all that you say. Maybe Brenda can help us. Yes, please, please. Hola, my old friend. <laughs> Hola. Brenda, are you, ¿estás ahí? Hola, Conchi, aquí estoy, claro que sí. Es que no, no entiendo todo, si me puedes traducir un poquito. Claro que sí. Y si te sientes más cómoda hablando en español, estoy segura que nuestros intérpretes podrán voltear todo el audio a inglés. Sí, mejor. Uh, sí. Mark, do you want to repeat that question for Conchi? Okay, look, what is what uh, you guys the, most the, fear? The, 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 no, 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 no. All we, we, uh, we're now moving into part two. The, the, uh, the, it's just now we're in a section where we're all talking about sharing your memories of that period in 2006 when uh, we were at the Puerta de la Americas Festival. And then after that, uh, the results of that time. And, and for example, uh, Liz and I saw, and the other delegates, the Mestiza Power, which uh, was an amazing event. Uh, and, uh, and subsequently to that, uh, we, we moved uh, Mestiza Power to uh, Washington, D.C., to the Native American Museum there. And so, okay, uh, okay. any thoughts, <laughs> memories? It's a, it was a lot, but yes, I'll try my best to just say that in Spanish. Um, te están preguntando, Conchi, que si quieres contarnos un poco de tus experiencias eh, de vuelta en 2006, cuando Mark y Liz estaban de visita en México, y también fueron a ver la presentación de Mestiza Power, eh, mm -hmm. que, en la que colaboraste con Silvia. Sí, eh... No, no recuerdo mucho porque ha pasado mucho tiempo y afortunadamente para eso hacemos teatro, como para ir recuperando la memoria. Eh, re, lo que recuerdo es que siempre me asombra que gente de otro país eh, haya, se conecte con una obra como Mestiza Power, que es localista, que es como... Eh, muy de una región muy particular y que gente de otro país se interese o se conecte con la historia me parecía como siempre me ha parecido como algo muy in increíble prácticamente y lo que recuerdo de Mark y Lisa es que eran muy efusivos y, y muy eh, como, como divertidos y sí recuerdo que fuimos a Washington junto con otros eh, dramaturgos y ahí leyeron la obra entre muchas mujeres y eso fue muy emocionante para mí. So Mark, I'll I'll let you know what Conti said. Um, she said that it was very impressive to her to see that when people come from out of the country, they're always very impressed on how uh, theater happens. Is cierto, Conti? Um, I think that for this one panel, it would be a great idea if everybody uh, connects to our web switcher pro with the token that is on for the panelists in our chat for everyone else on our virtual hub. So you can you can speak on your own languages and we will all be able to understand and then that way things will be smoother. Um, Conchi, Silvia, si gustan descargar la aplicación Web Switcher Pro y agregar el token que les dejé en el chat, van a poder escuchar en sus idiomas um, a, a todo lo que digamos en el panel para que las cosas vayan más sencillas. Ok. But please continue, I'll just pop out. Mark, do you, Mark um, Bly, do you want to go on? 
Yes, I don't know how to do the web switcher pro, but I'll continue. Uh, so, uh, uh, Sylvia, do you want to go ahead? Yes, I don't know. Sabina has already arrived. Maybe Hello. she would like to. Hola, Sabina. Maybe Hola. she would like to to take it from here, and then I'll I'll participate. If I don't know, what do you think, Mark? Oh, is Sabina with us now? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, Sabina. Hello. Please then. Hello. Yes, Sabina. Hello. Nice to say hello to everybody. See you again, Sabina. Um, I, can we just maybe Sylvia, because you, Sabina, Sabina, you just entered. Sabina, would you? Sabina, would you like to talk about your memories of that uh, of of uh, our getting together? initially and uh uh with uh victor ugo rasco and banda you're putting together that dinner party for us that uh with liz and everything uh that eventually led to the puerto of our having that puerto de la americas festival event that's right well my my memories are a bit blurred because that happened uh, 20 years ago, 23 years ago, something like that. But what I do remember is that you, Mark, um, we were talking, I'm not sure where, but we were talking about Mexican theater. And as Conchi says, it's always a, a good news to know that outside of Mexico, people are interested in our theater. And uh, you told me you were really interested uh, to meet not a few more, but many more Mexican playwrights. And I got really excited because you used the word globalization. In that time, globalization as a word started to sound around the globe. And uh, some months before the UNESCO, the UNESCO, the section of the ONU, the UN organization, had asked me to write about globalization and culture. And I wrote an essay saying I had few hopes and that I thought the so-called globalization was an euphemism to continue the cultural imperialism of North America. Uh, the, uh, they um, included my essay in a book uh, in which other writers wrote about the situation in Africa, in Australia, in Asia, in Latin America, and they, they all said something very similar. The, uh, the book started with my essay because it was the one which stated it very bluntly and from the title itself. It, it, I remember the title was Globalization as an Euphemism for Imperialism. Well, um, of, of course, we were not very happy that that was happening and we were very pessimistic with time we saw that it was a well-founded pessimism although later with the internet certainly a globalization has started to happen well you asked to ask me to introduce you to many playwrights not only carballido which you already knew uh, not only argüelles not only uh, leñero who were the, the generation of my teachers. So the first thing I did was introduce you to um, Rascón Banda. Victor Hugo was then the president of the SOCHEM, the organization, uh, the union of playwrights, really. And he was very kind and he was very accessible. I know you will tell us how much he helped 
to organize what happened later. And I myself organized a reunion at my home, at my apartment, uh, for you and Liz that came to Mexico to meet these very new writers for you. They were unknown for you. So um, what, what happened is more than the ones that were invited came. <laughs> I remember there was no place to sit. Everybody was cramped in the sofas. There were like three sofas and many chairs and still we were very, there were very, very many people. And we drank uh, wine and we talked and each introduced his, himself or herself. And then at four o'clock in the morning, three guys were there talking about theater. And in, I didn't know how to, how to invite them to say good night. <laughs> and they, they didn't, they stayed to, <laughs> for breakfast. I remember that, Carcamo, which I would uh, later direct he as a actor, me as a director was there. That's where I met him. And I know a lot of exciting things happened from there on, but I think it's a, it's a, for you and Liz, Mark, to tell that story. Thank you, Serena. It was a, it was a very special moment. It was a very special moment. Uh, so, uh, Sylvia, I think, could, could you pick up from there? Because you were very key in uh, moving it forward to uh, the Puerta del Americas Festival and also being helping us make a strong connection to Conchi Leon. And you also were a translator of Mestiza Power. Uh, so why don't you be a bridge for us? Please, Sylvia. To share your memories. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. I am very pleased to be here. And I thank all of uh, the LMDA and all the uh, organization, Brenda, and all the uh, people here at the, this uh, conference. Um, well, um, if uh, I, uh, you said the word, Mark, <laughs> if, uh, if I had uh, another chance to live, I, uh, I might be an engineer because I love to build bridges. <laughs> so you said the word uh, bridge. <laughs> uh, and, and, and that's what I like, uh, that I, I, I have done that very frequently as a playwright. Uh, because um, I, I, I don't think I have time to become a real engineer, but I do this kind of, of bridge. I fostered, uh, for example, a grant for Mexican playwrights at the Lark Theory, Devel uh, used to be the Lark Theory Development Company from uh, 2003 oh, yeah. to, from, to 2006. And then uh, during five years, I connected uh, producers from uh, all Latin America and Spain. And of course, this special uh, relationship with LMDA. You know? um, yes. So yes, Victor Hugo Rascón, that was mentioned by Sabina, that, that I'm very pleased to, to see her here, uh, was a very kind person, very generous. I miss him here in, uh, because he passed away some years ago and we miss him in the Mexican theater. And in 2006, uh, I, I was uh, close to him in Sohem and he asked me to plan and coordinate the visit of some of the LMDA dramaturgs. And as you said, 10 delegates came. And so I was uh, thinking how could I make this visit more uh, productive. And I imagined a place where people could come around and talk uh, different, uh, with different people. You could come around and talk with different people. And so uh, I um, invited around 25, more or less, Mexican or more, I think there were more, Mexican directors and playwrights companies 
I remember among them uh, Claudio Valdez Curi, um, Ponchi Leon, of course, and many, many, many playwrights and directors. So uh, I designed a gathering between LMN, LMD8 dramaturgs, and um, I, I approached um, uh, Mario Espinosa, who was uh, directing FONCA, the National Fund for Arts, and Puerta de las Americas Festival that was in FONCA uh, umbrella. So at the occasion, I had the, the pleasure to meet Brian Quitt, who was a former president. At the time, I think he was the president of LMDA, Liz Engelman, too, and you, Mark Bly. And from this meeting, uh, some very interesting relationships continue to develop. In 2007, I was invited to participate at the LMDA conference in Toronto. And in 2008, I was a guest speaker at the LMDA San Diego conference in both talking of Mexican theater and my work as a playwright. Because I have the sensation of that some of the Mexican playwrights are not known in the US and Canada or and also in Latin America, no? always the names, the, the same names pop, pop. So uh, I've, I tried to make connections in that way too. And as a bridge person also in 2006, I connected Conchi Leon and her powerful, powerful play, Mestiza Power, uh, with, drama, with you, Marvai, as a dramaturg. Uh, I invited uh, some of you, but you were interested in, in taking the play to the US, so I translated it. It was a very interesting trip, <laughs> Conchi, because uh, well, it is written in, sp in Spanish, but it is in Mayan too. In, I mean, it's uh, the way people in Merida talk that I love, so uh, it was very uh, pleasurable uh, translation. And it, uh, as I know, it, wa it uh, was taken to the Native American Museum in Washington. And time has passed by 20 years, as you said, and the relationships and exchanges have continued and have grown. In 2019, Brian Quirt uh, invited me to the Banff Playwrights Lab, where I work in my play, Anti Room to Happiness. So, um, and, and in 2020 also, but uh, the pandemic uh, canceled the, the lab. And now in 2021, I had the pleasure to be part of the panel, the creative process at home and away in the, in the, uh, la in the online lab. And so after going to Canada in 2019, just before the burst of the pandemic, I built a bridge from Toronto now, from Toronto to Mexico City, when Brian Quirt came to dictate a workshop on dramaturgy at the FITU Festival in UNAM, which is a festival, international festival of uh, theatre, un, uh, university theatre. So um, I'm very happy to be reunited with you again, to give account of the ongoing relationships in the art and the theatre world. Um, they say that uh, I have to, I want to finish my uh, participation with these thoughts. Um, they say that one remembers instance, so that's why we forget uh, the whole picture. But these little brilliant, brilliant moments are the memories. So when I think of LMDA, uh, I think of a happy exchange and I want to share with you an, an instant of the, this time, no? So I would like, I like mm -hmm. you to close your eyes. As if you close your eyes and then enter a big room where there are display five round tables, like for a party with uh, 10 people sat in each. We hear different, uh, different languages. We hear murmur, murmuring. They are directors, playwrights, and dramaturgs. We can hear them talk about their work and projects, trying to connect with each other uh, and to connect with the visitors. And then um, I, I see, I think Mark says, we are, they are trying to be polite. Well, we Mexicans <laughs> tend to be polite, but if you talk more as, as you did, you will find 
uh, who we are. And then I can see the future. When I looked at that room uh, and all these people talking and sharing, I can see the future which is now taking us to share this moment. Uh, so now you can open your eyes. Thank you. <laughs> that, that was that was a wonderful bridge building moment and a wonderful weaving of the past, present, and future simultaneously. Sylvia, thank you so much. You spoke of Brian. Uh, perhaps we will uh, ask Brian to share some of his memories as well. Brian Quirk. Thanks so much, Mark. Um, Sylvia, great to be back in a room with you today. Liz, uh, also lovely to see you. Sabina and Conchi, thank you for joining us. And um, I'm uh, currently the board chair. I was the president of LMDA at the time, and, and we uh, made the journey to Mexico City 15 years ago, and, and now I'm the board chair. Um, and uh, on behalf of the LMDA board and executive, I want to uh, welcome all of you to this year's virtual LMDA conference and also everyone who's watching. I want to welcome you to this two days of conference here uh, and the conference that will um, pick up in person in Mexico City in two weeks. So uh, a huge welcome to all of you and a thank you to Brenda and her team for getting us here today. Um, uh, I uh, live in Toronto as Sylvie has uh, beautifully introduced me. So thank you. Uh, I live in Toronto, uh, uh, originally known as Duck Ronto, uh, and the ancestral caretakers and storytellers of these territories are the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Haudenosaunee, the Anishinaabe, and the Wendat Nations. And I want to be sure to acknowledge and recognize the original peoples of this land and of the lands that you are uh, currently living and working on as well and um, uh, offer our thoughts to them today. Um, when I was thinking back on uh, 2006 and the adventure in Mexico City, it was my first trip to Mexico City. Uh, but I also wanted to ask two of the other people who were on our exchange then, um, Madeline Oldham, who is now the dramaturg at the Berkeley Rep in California, and Vanessa Portis, uh, who was a Canadian dramaturg and artistic director. And I invited both of them to send me a, a highlight or two. So I'm gonna share those because they, they sort of broaden the picture just slightly. Um, Madeline, uh, like me, said um, she fell in love with Mexico City. It was her first visit too. And I think you can't underestimate the power of that uh, few days that we spent there for those of us who are arriving for the first time. And while that is perhaps less relevant to the theater experience, our eyes were open to a remarkable city. Um, and Madeline certainly expressed that. And Madeline's other um, uh, uh, most powerful memory and she apologized that it was also not theater related, but was uh, a concert we went to uh, as part of the festival, one of the evenings of the Nortec Collective, um, which I also remember extremely vividly. It was a fantastic concert in a beautiful venue. Uh, it was really an amazing night. And for those of you not familiar with the Nortec Collective, I'm gonna put it up, uh, the link up in the chat uh, if I can. Um, and um, uh, the, um, I don't know if that's gone through, anyway. Uh, Nortec Collective, worth looking up. Uh, and then Vanessa, I uh, asked her and she said um, her highlights included us all seeing Sabina's adaptation of Stones in His Pockets, um, which Vanessa called a breathtaking and audacious political statement of cultural resistance. And I think that's a, a, a wonderful and powerful way of capturing what we witnessed that night. Um, Vanessa also mentioned the tour that Sylvia offered us, uh, of Sylvia's wonderful neighborhood in um, in Mexico City uh, and uh, the, the, the canal tour that um, Sylvia and her partner took Vanessa on, which is something that I was hoping to do uh, when LMDA returned to Mexico City. So I'm sorry to have missed that uh, last year of Sylvia. So I'll take a rain check on that. And yes, exactly, thank you. Uh, and then finally, um, uh, Vanessa also called um, met her time in Mexico City and, and a visit she and I did to the Anthropology Museum as, as you know huge highlights for us and called it the city a world wonder, and I would certainly concur. Um, for me, meeting Sylvia was one of the highlights, and for all the reasons that Sylvia just outlined, that we have managed to sustain and build a partnership and a relationship over many years with a big gap in the middle, and it, which I think speaks to the challenge of sustaining these relationships uh, that, are, that work across borders and across distance. How do we sustain them? How do we make them meaningful? How can we find other ways to invite one another to each other's 
um, programs, countries, where do we find the funds to do that? How do we make them real? How do we sustain them? That is the huge work uh, and I don't have the answers. And for 10 years, I didn't have the answer because Sylvia and I didn't meet for almost 10 years. But um, here we are back again uh, and uh, connected in, in, through the Banff Playwrights Lab. Um, I also love meeting Boris Stroman um, from uh, Theater La Capilla, who I was able to meet again last year. Uh, and again, uh, uh, um, not a, a, a deep connection, but a, a long lasting one, and one that has we've covered these years about playwrights and about translations. Um, the other two things that I wanted to flag were um, the, the, that huge gathering of Mexican playwrights and directors uh, and our delegation. The thing that I walked away from was um, a huge and sudden awareness of the scope of Mexican playwriting and storytelling and my realization of how little aware I was of it. And that is entirely my ignorance, but that is exactly why I wanted to be there. Um, it it, it um, reminded me, it told me and introduced me to artists um, telling stories from across Mexico, particularly from the borderlands in the north. Um, and their vantage point was particularly vivid, of course, as we all deal with borders, um, particularly that border. But the, the, the border between Canada and Mexico, of course, has this huge thing in the middle. Um, and it is a huge barrier between the exchange between Canada and Mexico and Canadian artists and Mexican artists. So the vantage point that those artists offered me uh, opened my eyes to the breadth and 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 um, beauty of American or of uh, Mexican playwriting. So uh, thank you to Sylvia and others for organizing that. It made a huge difference and reminded me of how little I knew about the scene there. And then the last two things, um, the enormous number of uh, Mexican theaters in, in the city. Uh, I was not aware of the, again, the breadth of the theater making world in Mexico City. Uh, and uh, this trip illuminated that for me in the way that only being on the ground in a place can actually make it real. Uh, and that uh, uh, um, invited me into, in a very small way, into the ecology of that place, the theater ecology of it. And I, I, I walked away only knowing a little bit, and I learned a little bit more when I was there last year with Sylvia. Uh, I, I don't know nearly enough, but uh, it made it real and it and it proved yet again the value of being somewhere and, and our digital contact and connection is invaluable it allows us to do something like we're doing today. Um, the being there, obviously, we know this makes the difference. So how do we sustain those? How do we make them happen? How do we find the funding and the opportunities? for us to be in each other's landscapes on each other's territories. Um, that is what I uh, um, walked away with um, and have worked a lot on over the last 15 years. So it has inspired um, uh, a lot of my own work of trying to uh, connect with artists in other countries, um, you know, others beyond Mexico. And um, so thank you for the, the, the fuel that that visit to Mexico City offered 15 years ago. Thank you, Brian. Um, there's there's so much there. Um, parenthetically, I don't want this to be lost. Um, I think it was, it was Sylvia who mentioned this. Uh, while we were there, uh, I uh, we always. <laughs> I, I think this is common to so many fields. We always want to be first, and uh, that's just in human nature, perhaps. Uh, while we were there uh, back in 2004, 2006, uh, and we were in search of uh, that creature dramaturg, we were looking for dramaturgs. We were looking for some kind of correspondence there. And as Brian, I think, so in such an elegant, articulate way has shared, we discovered so many other universes, so many theaters, so many uh, uh, playwrights, so many playwrights from so many areas uh, outside of Mexico, and and it was so eye opening and so many sensory opening beyond the eyes. Um, and while we were there, again, this is back to. There's, there's not always a first. Uh, while we were there, uh, other colleagues from the United States, the extraordinary artist, John Eisner, artistic director of the Lark Theater Company, and Andrea Hebler, colleague of his, they were also there 
at the Puerto del Americas Festival. They were also there looking, meeting artists. And they, over the last 15, 16 years, have had the occasion to develop many connections, many artists, many relationships. I know Sabina, for example, has had readings and work done there. They have continued uh, to sustain many relationships, which is wonderful. I, I, I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge that. Uh, yes, we were there, uh, but uh, we haven't always been able to do that. Uh, Brian's right. We need to continue to make these connections, continue to sustain them. Maybe this is a, a another wake up call for that. So thank you for mentioning that, Brian. All right, uh, Liz, please share your memories. Hi, everybody. Um, I just saw Sylvia future that we imagined with her um, 15 years ago in that room with our eyes closed. We're now here. Um, and Sabine and I promise you we will not have this conversation until four in the morning, but I wish there was some wine. Um, that was that was a, a, a beautiful evening. And I just want to say, I don't want to repeat anything you've said already, but I, I want to underscore the importance of relationships. I feel like all of this began because of relationships. Um, you know, and as Mark said, with curiosity, you know, two people having having curiosity, having interests, and then based on those relationships, look who we were able to um, bring into our circle, and then the expanse and scale of what we were able to witness, as you said, um, Brian and Mark, you know, it, it started with relationships, and then we, we learned really not only about dramaturgs in Mexico, it was less about that. It was about um, how, um, what theater making, what the theater culture, what um, what our cultures um, both had um, as differences and find some things in common. But it was really more of, for me about the, the spark that for me, conversation and questioning, which is the heart of dramaturgy led us to, which was conversations with more people in bigger rooms. Um, and then to um, concerts and these, the, the productions, um, extras and the states of power that you've all referenced and that continued and these relationships that have continued. So for me, it was really mostly about um, the importance of, of just starting um, and reaching out. And then just to say um, what I valued so much was just an opportunity to have a conversation about playwriting, um, about, theater making in a, in a different culture. You know, we, we so at that point, I felt um, we were so rarely doing that. Um, the opportunities, you know, didn't arise or we hadn't sought them in, in intentional ways. And so the joy of really just beginning it and sharing those conversations and talking about both theater making and dramaturgy and those intersections um, was joyful and powerful. And then also really, Figuring out, and this is going to be the bridge. I'm going to be the Sylvia Bridge the next part of our conversation about the present, but really feeling like what I was getting from the the playwrights in Mexico City in, in those days was this idea that trans, um, publication of plays was almost as important in some ways as productions of plays in terms of exposure of work across a big country. Um, and really, that felt different from playwright experiences in the United States at the time. It was less about our playwrights having our having plays published and more about where will those plays get produced. And so the conversation around the importance of, of translation and dissemination of work was really eye-opening for me, that it was actually through um, through a tangible book. And we left, as Mark has eloquently written in another article, we left with like so many um, so books and CDs are like, a, like, this is the way to show and share plays, you know, in lieu of production in some ways. And at the time, I felt where we may have, where we couldn't help in the way in 2006, as I think maybe we're in a better position now in both LMDA as an organization as a field as a whole, is at the time we didn't have a lot of Latinx dramaturgs in the LMDA fold at the time, and really in the in the field to be able to help with that translation from from the from the U.S. side of the border, in order to really try to you know we had the books, and then what can we do now? And I feel like 15, 16 years later, that's that's changed in both the field and our organization, 
and that we're, we're way better poised in terms of the diversity um, organization and the languages that our dramaturgs and playwrights now speak um, and can communicate that there's possibly more connection and collaboration uh, years later than there was then. And that excites me because I felt like there was a potential and a ball that was kind of dropped by the lack of diversity on our side um, in our field. So that's my segue into saying what you remember at that time and how theater was being made at that time in 2006, the, tr the evolution of theater making, not, you don't have to speak of course on behalf of the whole country, but in your own theater making as artists um, uh, in the world, directors, playwrights, producers, what has changed? Where do you feel like you have seen your playmaking and you and your country's theater making going. And anybody, I, I, I you jump as moved. So, okay, I will, Sabina, how would how might you answer that in terms of evolution? Yeah, Liz, could you repeat it? You your statement yes sure um we met there at a very particular time um in 2006 you were making theater in a certain way your collaborators were making a certain kind of theater in terms of what content style form now in, in 2021 we're in a different place you're in a different place and wondering what you have seen in your work and others as an evolution in terms of how theater is being made um, in your circles. Right, right. Well, in Mexico, um, it's a very lively scene, our Mexican theater. When I started um, writing for the theater, I was called the Mexican woman that writes for the theater in my generation. I was very lonely as uh, as a woman. Uh, nowadays, half of the playwrights are women. Half of the directors are women. That thing, the, the coming to the scene of women is very important in Mexico. Also, um, we have a less Mexico City Center theater, which is very good, Conchi, is one of the, maybe she's the most brilliant example of, of uh, the coming of the corners of the country to the center and uh, spreading around the country. So Mexico, Mexico is doing very well theater wise. Now, what is the relation of Mexico to the global scene? We, in my case, I, I'm not a critic of theater, so I'm not very sure of what is happening globally. But I know that I, I'm opening plays all around uh, Latin America. My latest play has been staged in 13 countries, including uh, Brazil. But we think of ourselves still as a world apart from the um, from the English speaking world, or at least that's what I feel. Um, Netflix and the other apps have uh, integrated many playwrights to their work, and that is uh, that is very important in the sense that yes, we're crossing the geographic lines very easily, but I'm still surprised that it's not, uh, that the dialogue with uh, North America is not more fluid. It's really surprising because we are neighbors. Uh, it seems mm -hmm. that the Rio Bravo, uh, which you call the Rio Grande, very, very eloquent. We call it the, the Rio Bravo, the brave uh, river, and you call it the Rio Grande, the big, 
and maybe it's wishful thinking from each side, it's still very white. I think um, that's a very important subject. Why is it so, why it's not more fluid? Last week, I'm talking with uh, HBO about uh, a, a story I'm adapting, a book I'm adapting for for them, for HBO International, and I ask, so in what language should it be? And they said, you write in Spanish. And I said, okay, but there are parts in LA. A third part of the book happens in, um, in North America. And they said, oh, that's in English. I said, okay. And they told me, but you know, this guy you have, that's an Australian CEO, we want him to be Spanish. And he said, it makes a lot of sense. Okay, but in what language do I write? And they told me, again, write in whatever you want. Anyway, it's going to be translated, doblaje. How do you say that in English? It's going to, actors are going to talk over it, uh, doblaje. And that fluidity, we, I wish we could get to that in the theater because still theater is like the, the essence of drama. You cannot compare theater to movies or to Netflix. It's not the same. It's, a, it's the theater where the playwright and the actor are completely alive. And it's the essence. It's, that's the, the most antique art. And it's also the most present art in the two sense of the, the the word present. So I wish, yes, we could uh, talk more of why it's not more fluid and what can we make to make it more fluid, this interchange across El Rio Grande or El Rio Bravo. Thank you, Sabina. And that's a, that's a great, um, Question to tee up, I think, for the conference over these next couple of days, and then also um, in Mexico City, to to see if we can find answers to that question of how we can bravely cross that big brave uh, <laughs> river and have <laughs> and have um, more collaborations um, as as we all want to do. And I'm I'm curious, Sylvia, your answer to that question or add some more questions of your own in terms of where you sit today um, with your, your theater making and how you see work at, in Mexico um, having evolved. And if you have any answers to Sabina's question, um, love to hear that too. Well, no, no, no answers. Her questions are very uh, important for our theater and I agree with her in, in many <clears throat> senses. No, so no uh, answers. No, I have questions too. <laughs> Uh, the same and others know because I think uh, I, I have I was uh, reading for other reasons a book called Cultural Code um, and uh, it's very interesting because it's written for marketing but there are very subtle cultural codes that are part of these questions I mean it's not only the language but it's how as you as you were saying Liz how do we conceive theater in every country in every region and I have found in the in North America in Canada I know less I, I'm not very familiar with that but in you the US the parcels by the origins or the ethnic uh, you you belong to uh, is very strong and I have found that very weird very strange I I have like but how can I do that? Because yes, you are translated and you are read or you get a production or something, but the, 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 the judgment is there. Uh, I wrote a play about Sylvia Plath and Ted Hughes in Spanish. I love those poets and that's why I wrote about them. And I was questioned 
in the U.S. Why you being a Mexican, not being American, not being exactly. English, write about? Why will I say because mm. I can? Because I want and I can. Because in Mexico, then that I, that's what I love here in theater. You can write about anything you want, in, about any subject, any person, any character, any. And I love that. And I think that has led us to enrich our playwriting. We have we um, and also I, I what I found I find different now from the 2006 theater is this, this uh, com a lot of playwrights and directors and actors from all over the country in Mexico are moving around now with the pandemic it has stopped a little bit moving around I mean the mobility that we have now in, in, in Mexico and in all the nation is big. For example, uh, country, as, as Sabina said, uh, is, is here in, this, in many places, but also uh, the plays, the productions travel in Mexico a lot. And also we travel uh, abroad. And uh, that's very, very important. The before it was less. No, so the mobility around the world, I think, has uh, also is a difference. Thank and you. In, in my, uh, see, yeah, sorry. Ah, yeah. Thank you, Conchi. Thank you, Conchi. Nice to see you. Yes, yeah, so good to see you. Uh, she she left we're, right we're as on. I was going to ask her a question. <laughs> it, it sounds like I, I, just to say not to speak for Conchi, but I'm just uh, wondering. You know, you both, you both referenced um, move, moving around the country much more now, and and Sabina, you mentioned Conchi being her and her plays and her working everywhere. Um, uh, if there's anything you might like to add in terms of the work that she's been making recently or maybe what she's working on just to give a we didn't get to hear from her as much to maybe say a little bit about what she might be doing that's been so powerful in the country well uh, in mexico we have a mythification of the indian as uh, in many places and conchi just started to do these plays that are happening in this what we call the Indian part of the country, which is she first, first the thing she told us is it's not Indian, it's mestizo. So stop talking about us as Indian, we are mestizos just as you are. Next development is start talking about us like if we were living in another century. We're not, we're in the same century, we see TV, we have iPhones, so stop doing that. But yes, we're different. We're still different. In Yucatan, we dress different. We eat different. We have a different humor. And wow, we're feminists too. And that that is so refreshing. And I she's been very successful because of that. Because you go and see her place and a new world, which is not really completely different than ours opens up with a lot of authenticity she doesn't play for the to the audience she's just authentic and uh, so she's been very successful and she's a very good playwright i haven't said that because all that is uh, like very nice and good but she's very effective on stage Mm -hmm. Over to you, Mark. Uh, that is, is Ms. I have a quick question of, for Sabina and Sylvia. Is Mestiza Power still done, uh, performed a lot? I don't know. I I saw it in El Teatro Helénico and I loved it. Then I invited the uh, Conchi to work with me. 
<laughs> because she's a wonderful actress or actor. No, in English you say she's a wonderful actor. She's a wonderful actor too. So uh, I don't know, Sylvia. I remember. I Well, um, Sylvia. Yeah, thank you. I, I think I was you were going to to talk. Um, yes, I think uh, Sabina uh, is still uh, somewhere uh, playing so from time to time. But Conchi now has a play also with Mayan uh, traditions about a baptism. I have not seen that play, but I think it's very interesting. Uh, and also, she has this work about biographical uh, play that is Hija de Ti, Cachorro de León, no? Yeah, um, that's that's great. It's, it's a beautiful. wonderful monologue. The very, it's a monologue done by her. Yeah, very deep. And, and that, that was now with the evolution of theater on the screens, <laughs> for the screens. I saw that ad adaption and adaptation for uh, Zoom. Uh, and it was very good also for the screen, eh? uh, very, very well adapted, very well performed. And so, but I think that Tisa Powers is still from time to time here or there. Mm -hmm. So, Aha, del Manantial del Corazón, yes. Ah, yes, Ryan, thank you. Yeah, well. No, yeah. I, re I remember seeing it and it was, it was, uh it it operate it had such power and operated on so many different levels in terms of the the daily rights of the mayan uh women and and on this whole other level i kept remembering the sensory power of it uh you know there's there, there's there's the play there's the language the extraordinary acting there was also the sensory dimension of it as well uh, of of the washing of the hair and, and all of that and the smell it was it was just a, profoundly theatrical she's an extraordinary artist i know we need to switch to the q and a at this point thank you everyone for your your extraordinary uh contributions uh wonderful uh at a 15 year distance at a 15 year mir mirror not that is never easy uh, you're, you've been very kind to share and to stay with us in, in this way, uh, and, and, and the audience as well, uh, all very kind to listen. Uh, so, uh, I know uh, Amanda and Jay have been collecting questions that they will field and share with us. Please. Hello, uh, my name is um, I'm one of the volunteers yeah. for LMDA conference. Um, so we have one question from Martin K. Green Rogers. Uh, what do you think is the future of collaborations across the borders with time, money, and other things being a potential obstacle? I'm going to repeat one more time. What do you think is the future of collaboration across borders with time, money, and other things being a potential obstacle? Well, if Thank time, you, but if time, money, and other things are the obstacle, we're very far away. They should be time, money, and other things should be vehicles. When <laughs> some, it can happen very easily. That's what I think. Any other I'd, panelists? Oh. Yeah, I'd just like to add that our next panel, in fact, addresses. Uh, I, will probably address some of those issues in terms of Mexico and Canada and the, the dramaturgical collaborations between the two countries, which are, are, are small and very modest at the moment, um, because, as I said earlier, the, the, the gap between um, the Canadian border and, and the Mexican border is is indeed is grand and has so many obstacles in it and, and has been very hard to surmount uh, at all. I think. I would say that there are there are more connections and contacts uh, internationally for, for Canadian artists now than there ever have been. Um, uh, uh, not as many, not nearly as many of those are uh, links to um, Mexico or Central and South America, and that is a huge absence in the work here. Um, not only the collaborations, but um, the presence of of productions of work by any artist by from almost any of those countries are almost completely absent in Canada. 
uh, which goes down to the, the the timidity of our producers and theaters largely, and also the, the the conviction by Canadian artists over the last thirty years to to produce Canadian work um, in the face of let's be honest the the huge amount of British and American work that was on our stages. So we are still dealing with that, and more currently about prioritizing work by Indigenous artists from these these lands uh, and from uh, um, uh, diverse artists from so many places that uh, that uh, live and work in Canada. All of those are realistic barriers, unfortunately, to to seeing more work by Mexican and Central American artists on our stages. Yet, I would like to add something. I I had an experience at Calgary. Uh, they call me and they say they want to stage be, between Pancho Villa and a Naked Woman, and I said, "Really, in Cal at Calgary? Okay." Fine, great. So they stage it. I go there and I'm surprised. I'm still surprised. Why are they doing this? And their producers, and, I, and I, they have a big, big theater. First night, it's completely full. And I'm, then I understand. Half of the theater, the less expensive tickets, all were Mexicans. Calgary receives so, uh, many, many work, temporary workers every year. So that was the public. And the other public were those Canadians that were had the necessity to understand from where these guys were coming. So I found that very um, intelligent producing. I, th I thought the producer was very intelligent and he was very successful. That dimension, there, there are millions of immigrants from our countries one way to the other. That's something I, I, I don't know if it's taking in a, if producers are watching this phenomenon. Uh, also to Martine's Liz? question, yeah, to Martine's question, I also wonder if there's a pandemic silver lining in some of this too, in terms of now these conversations that are happening as we're having now with technology that we're able to meet, be introduced to, um, see work um, across all borders, um, if you have access to technology, that we're able to to collaborate in new ways or find each other in new ways or continue uh, connections in new ways that we couldn't when with the expense of travel or when we weren't able to travel or so I, I wonder in terms of time and and money and to other things Martine if maybe somehow uh, what we learned through this last year can connect us each other to um, wider wider circle of collaborators to start new projects. Yeah. We've got um, another question I'd love for us to get to before we finish. I'm Amanda. I'm Amanda? A, one of the volunteers. Um, considering you got to see a dream as great as this reunion come true, what does everyone in this gathering wish for when you think of the future? Sylvia, you should close your eyes and dream what you see. <laughs> well, <laughs> now I, I, I think, um, well, for me, it's important that the future brings more theater. I mean, now that with the pandemic, the, the theaters are closed and we are beginning to, to come back, for me, the nearest future, I hope we have theaters full of people as in Calgary, you know, it's uh, what I wish for. But I think I, I, coming to the from the other question too, I would like to say that festivals are a, a, a huge bridge to make the place uh, circulate. So if uh, uh, there will be more festivals that bring Mexican uh, place to Canada and to other countries, so I, I would like to see a future with more uh, 
breaches that not not only individual or group little groups but huge like maybe festivals i think it's not easy to to um, develop a festival but it's a way to make place uh, uh, move around you know? and and yes i see I, I i am optimistic so let's have more theater <laughs> all right we have one minute left uh, we have time for perhaps one well i we have time for one question uh anyone want to jump in with a a, a last minute uh, comment or uh, i think this has been a terrific uh event but um i wanted to say one last thing uh this this whole question about the future uh i think uh you know i started off from this place of, of that we had curiosity uh what do i want in the future well i want us i want us to get to a place where we we of course we always have curiosity we must have curiosity Someone just said, I think it was uh, Sylvia, we need more festivals. When you think about 15, 16 years ago, uh, my God, this the and borders and, and walls, the digital, what it, what it has done, uh, unfortunately, has broken down so many walls. And the whole notion of, I, I have seen probably 50, 60 productions in the last year or two that I would never have seen. I just simply would not have seen. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. I have seen I've seen them now, and uh, and we'll have seen festivals and everything. Uh, it's it's incredible what's happened, and so my curiosity continues to happen. Uh, uh, it will always happen, and uh, that's our greatest trait as artists: is curiosity. We must never let that die. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you uh, out there who watched us, listened to us. You've been, we're grateful to you all. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you so much for the conversation. It was really nice to see you again. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, it's a wonderful Bye. reunion. Bye. Sylvia, Sabina, Thank Liz, you, Brenda, Mark, Brian, and Conchi, who left early. Thank you for a great panel. Um, and everyone, we will be seeing you very soon in 15 minutes for the Canadian Mexican Artist Exchange. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Hi, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to see you all. Oh, Sylvia, we will come and see you soon. <laughs>